If I can have your attention here in the media center, we're going to roll into our post-race media availability for tonight's Cookout 400. We're joined by our race-winning car owner and crew chief. We have Justin Alexander, crew chief in the number three Bass Pro Shops Chevrolet, and team owner Richard Childress. I know you guys have a lot of questions. We'll go ahead and roll straight into them. If you have a question, raise your hand, and we'll get a wireless microphone to you. We'll start with Holly Kane. White crayon. Uh -huh. Y'all still stunned? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he just meant to rattle his head. He just meant to rattle That's all it was. I, I can imagine that you can anticipate what my question is, but just want to hear what you guys think about the finish. Uh, um, I'll be honest with you, I, I have not even seen any of it. I, I, the last I saw, we were going into three, and then. Um, I kind of looked down for a second thinking that it was uh, it was over and I, I was trying to watch him and I, I, I didn't see anything. All I saw was a cross start finish line. So I haven't seen anything on the finish. Uh, but we've had speed all weekend. We had speed. Um, and it's uh, just a testament to everyone at RCR uh, with all the hard work they put in in these two off weeks. Uh, from the time we unloaded, uh, we were fast, uh, led practice, uh, qualified sixth. And uh, we, you know, we should have won the race uh, out the, outright before the uh, before the caution uh, with with Stenhouse. So um, <coughs> it's um, you know we 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 executed all weekend, and um, I don't know the finishes. We're in victory lane, and I, I I can't comment on anything else. I haven't seen it honestly. Do you want me to comment? Please, thank you. <laughs> yeah. The uh, <coughs> you know when I see him go down the back stretch. Uh, like, like Justin said, we had to race till the 47 and whoever went in there and wrecked. You know, we had such a big lead on the 11. And I said, oh, man, I said, well, leave it up. I didn't do anything. We just waited to let restart, and the 22 jumped outside and got in front. And I knew what he knew he had to do going in. Anyone, they would have done it to him. You know, it's one of those deals that when it comes down to winning a race and you're in that position and you're hungry – you do what it takes, and that's what I told him all his life. Go over here to your right, to Trey. Trey Lyle, FrontStretch.com. This can be a question for both of you. Do you feel like this is maybe Austin's best uh, complete race in the Cup Series, given the speed you all had in practice to qualifying, now leading to how, how good he was in that final stretch of the race, and then ultimately you know, he had to face two Cup champions, and he got the job done? Um, yeah, from as far back as I can remember, I'd say this is by far, I, I told someone that before the race, uh, was asking me that, uh, up until this race started, it was the best weekend. One of the be better weekends we've had, uh, since, um, since I've been back and then even before, uh, from years back, we, I don't think we've ever just been this competitive from, uh, from the, from the jump start. So, uh, yes, I would say that and, and able to go up there and drive, uh, you know, execute all day and then and then pass the 22, pass the 11 on track. Uh, we did it a couple times. Uh, it it just shows that we you know we had the best car out there, uh, in my opinion, um, and and one of the best cars uh, throughout the weekend. So yes, I would say uh, probably yes. Yeah, I think this was probably <clears throat> the best all over from start to finish that he's probably had. I think this is his fifth win, and uh, Texas was pretty big. I mean, he won it flat out. But uh, I'm just proud of these guys for the effort they've put in. We said a few weeks ago we're going to change the culture, and that's what the complete companies did. And Justin, Keith Rodman, everyone that's that's been involved, I can't say enough about how proud I am of them. And the pit crew tonight, they stood up all night long. Go next to Jeffrey, then to Nate, and then we'll go over to Chris. Uh, Jeffrey Ronka Motorsports today. This one's for you, Justin. Um, so what new challenges did the uh, option tire present? And, um, you know, how were you, you know, how would you kind of strategize with it, you know, with the additional challenge? Uh, definitely, definitely a bigger challenge than most weeks. Um, it, uh, the biggest thing, I think, was when to put them on, obviously, and how to, how to get the most out of them. Uh, I didn't think guys were going to put a, I didn't think a lot of guys were going to put them on early. Um, I didn't think you wanted to, you know, it would have got your track position, but then you were going to get, you know, it was going to bite you back in the end. And we debated whether we saved a set for the end of the race, uh, back and forth. We almost put a set on, uh, I think the, the 99 and 12 did there at the end, um, before the caution, last caution. So 
it was it, it made our job a lot more difficult. And I think um, I think it was I think it was cool from a fan perspective to see the different strategies and the you know there, there was definitely a big difference in in pace uh, and especially Richmond with so many other strategies you have going on. So I think it was a success uh, in my opinion. And um, you know I, whether we do more or not, I don't know. But it was um, it, it makes it tough. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. For you, Richard, there, there were reports that on the team radio, um, uh, Austin was being told, I don't care how you do it, just wreck him. W were you guys kind of encouraging him? I didn't him? say that. Okay. <laughs> I didn't hear anyone say it, and I was on the radio. Did you? No, I, I don't think I don't anyone know. said I didn't that. Anything. Okay. No, he. everybody was quiet. We left it up to him to do his job, and hell no, nobody said go out and wreck him or do what you got to do. Nobody. I was on the radio the whole time. Obviously, uh, Joey Logano, Paul Wolf, Denny Hamlin were all unhappy. Um, but Hamlin said something to the effect of, it's, it's worth the trade off. Uh, I guess to your point earlier that you think those guys would do it too. Is that kind of how this is viewed? Is it's, you know, if, if there's retribution, if, they, if there's payback, it's worth it to make the playoffs? Short track racing is short track racing. And you're going to see that. I've seen it more than once, and you have too, Nate. You've been around a long time. And when it comes down to the end of the day, any of these guys do what it takes to win the race there at the very end. Go to far left to Chris. Chris Powell, Couch Coach Live. Richard and crew, congratulations on the win today. Uh, Richard, in the broadcast, you were very stoic, and so much things were going on as far as having the lead, then the caution. Just talk about how, how you was able to kind of corral your emotions during those chaotic times. Said a few bad words when the 47 and whoever it was wrecked down there. Then I took a deep breath. I didn't even come on, did I? At the end of the day, I left it up to them. I didn't tell them anything. I knew these guys knew their job. The pit crew did what they needed to do. And uh, so I didn't say anything. I don't – no, I know I didn't. I don't think I'm not aware. And that's unusual. <laughs> Steve. Congratulations on the win. Steven Sykes and Live and Global Media. Let's put this shoe on a different foot. If this happened to you, what would you like to see NASCAR do going forward? We understand that there's challenges and there's short track racing, short track racing, but it could have been potentially dangerous, a crash, anything else further. Thank the Lord, nothing. But what would you like to see different? Well, if you've been around racing as long as I have, you've seen this happen a whole lot. And I think NASCAR will handle it just like they do in – it's racing, and that's what that's what they do. It's happened to us before. We've been leading that race on the last lap. I, I was just talking to somebody who was leading Pocono, coming into the last uh, tunnel turn, got knocked out of the way with a three Earnhardt, and uh, you know I could go on and on and tell you more of them. But you know that's racing. Jordan, uh, Jordan Bondurant, ESPN Richmond. Richard, you you mentioned Dale Senior. I mean. He obviously has had some historic moments here at this particular racetrack, but obviously getting the Intimidator uh, moniker and everything else to you, you know, knowing that it's your grandson and it's the, the number three, kind of put that into emotions, seeing the, the three car back in victory lane. You know, just any time you win, and especially when you see your family, uh, grandson go out and win it. I've been in a lot of winter circles with him over the years, uh, dirt tracks, late model ARCA, trucks, all of them. You know, it's just, it's really, it just gives you that great feeling. You, I know how hard he's worked for it, and I know how much crap he's taken over the years for uh, being my grandson and going out and driving. He had to earn it, and that's the way he's done it. He's earned his way. Matt? Matt Weaver, Sports Not over here, RC. Um, not to push back on you too hard, but there's audio surrounding the internet of the three teams radio wreck him wreck him wreck him are you willing to like go back and listen to it and then reconsider yeah i don't think anybody i never heard it on our radio unless somebody was making it up i didn't hear it did you no, I, I not on our number one channel number two channel no one said that and if you believe in everything you hear on the internet i'm not santa claus if it ever comes up <laughs> Any more questions? We'll go to Bob. It's probably somebody just saying it, you know, putting it in there. 
Hey, Bob. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Bob Parkers, Fox Sports. Uh, I mean, the, the, it doesn't look great. <laughs> so, I mean, do you view this as just, uh, I mean, like, what would you compare this to um, in other short track racing? Because I mean, he, he's far behind Logano, bumps him out of the way, and then comes down on the 11. Well, I don't know what you could compare it to. I mean, I can go back in history. I've seen a lot of it before, and I can't sit here and pick one. But uh, it's racing. You know, they would do it to him, I promise you. If he had been leading it, that 22 would have moved him out of the way. The 11 would have moved him out of the way. Either one of them would have done the same thing. I've seen it before, and you have to. I've seen it right here at Richmond. Clint Boyer won the race the night that the – Eight, I think it was 88 and 18 knocked each other out of the way. He come under him and won the race on the last lap. You just think back of history. And I'd like to go back to that Internet deal. That no one, I promise you, on our radio, somebody may have put it on there or come up with something, but nobody told him to wreck him. I never said a word, I promise you. And I know he didn't because I was listening to our radio. No one said that. So you know how the internet goes. <laughs> I've heard all kinds of things. You have to. So that answers that. Come here, right, Bob? Did that give you a good enough answer? Yeah. Just think back in history. You've been to a lot of races. No, I didn't hear. I I didn't hear him, and I was on the radio with him. We'll see. Well, if he did, he did a damn good job at it. He won the race. <laughs> well, and I guess that's the question. Like, we're all sitting here wondering, what is, where, is there a line, and where is it? And maybe it's different now because, as Denny, and, and something that Denny said, is that, like, to get from 32nd in points to now top 16 in points, there's probably a different line than maybe there was in the past. I mean, is there? We're in a chase. I don't know where he's trying to draw the line. What do you think? You speak up. Take I, care I, of I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm enjoy listening. Um, I, I don't know. I, I honestly, I, have, I truthfully, I haven't seen anything. I have not. I didn't see any of the last half lap um, after we left the back stretch. So I can't comment on anything that happened. But um, with the way the format today, just in general, with the racing, um, We've been the victim of, um, of, of a lot of different, um, you know, guys, g g when you have to win to get in kind of thing, right? It's, um, it's the format. It's, it's what, I think it's what NASCAR wants. Um, you know, I certainly they don't want anyone to get hurt, and I don't want anyone to get hurt. And um, <clears throat> it's, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it happens all the time. It's not just there at the end of a race. It happens throughout the race. A lot of times you miss it when guys will knock you out of the way or they'll, They'll do what they got to do. Um, so I'm not commenting on the um, on the end of our race, but um, that is the format that that we race in nowadays. So, right, Jackson did like Richard Times Dispatch. Uh, just to kind of echo something, you know, Denny was saying down there. I mean, is this something you know with a controversial finish like this that you kind of expect any kind of uh, you know retaliation? Just prepare yourself. So I can say it goes a two way street. Kick a dog, he might bite you, but you might get bit again yourself. Well, with that, congratulations, gentlemen, and uh, thank you. And, and, and go prepare for a good night of celebration. Thank you. Yes, you sir. Thank you. Yep. Hey, thank all the press for all you do. Thank you.